Ah, okay. Uh, so chemsex is a term that we're hearing more and more. Um, and basically it's combining drugs and sex. And almost always it includes a stimulant, not always, but almost always, um, cocaine, methamphetamine, uh, there's other, a few other synthetics floating around, but mostly meth these days. And they're used to really, chemsex is, the drugs are used to enhance sexual behavior. Uh, oftentimes it's really not just the orgasm, but it's all about desire. Just much like sex and porn addiction, which is why we treat them all together. They're very similar in that uh, it really stokes up the desire, the wanting. Um, I've had chemsex addicts who um, would be out on a run using drugs, having sex with multiple partners, and literally be in the act of having sex with someone and on their phone looking for the next one uh, because that stokes up the desire, dopamine and that wanting system. So, so chemsex is all about this fusion of drugs and sexual behavior in a way that's very compulsive and very driven. Um, there's a couple other things people talk about with chemsex. One is that um, there's a great uh, search for connection. Uh, to, and so a lot of guys use it um, for sex, but also really to try to kind of feel connected to someone. And, uh, and I think that's a, a testimony to the amount of loneliness, not just in the gay community, but in, in our society in general. Um, this, and it's, a, it's a, uh, a need, of course, that we all have, both for touch and for emotional connection. The problem with seeking it through chemsex, though, is that um, it's such an aggressive and such a trip that any kind of connection, I put connection in air quotes, you get with someone is, is really kind of a chemical connection. And I think it really ultimately leaves the person feeling quite hollow and disappointed and empty. So I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a troublesome pattern. Now, the, just a, a fun fact, the, the term itself, chemsex, was um, coined by a guy in London, a friend of mine actually named David Stewart, who um, believes, his definition meant chemsex to be only for gay men, because he felt that chemsex was a phenomenon that <clears throat> grew out of the, the internalized homophobia and shame and stigma and other kinds of factors uh, that a lot of gay men live with. And so he thinks of chemsex as this kind of close package referring only to gay men. I personally think chemsex occurs, we, I know it occurs, among everybody. So we have a lot of straight men, for example, who may use cocaine and go with prostitutes, or meth and go with prostitutes, and, or alcohol to um, disinhibit themselves. So uh, no one sexual orientation has the monopoly on chemsex. But um, there is a little bit of a uh, discussion right now out in the professional world about this, about what are we going to call this, and are we going to honor that kind of idea of chemsex as a gay thing, but call the other thing fused drug and sex behavior, or what? We're, that's still shaking out. But, but chemsex is a growing thing. It's growing because of methamphetamine and the uh, potency of it now that uh, basically the cartels are supplying meth, uh, industrial strength methamphetamine, pharmaceutical grade methamphetamine, methamphetamine on the streets. So it's a really highly addictive substance and it's a bad trend. And I will just say, um, you know, opioid, uh, the opioid epidemic, of course, has received a lot of notoriety and, and well deserved. It needs the attention. But what it's totally overshadowed the equally large meth epidemic in this country, not just among gay men, but among straight women, straight men, mostly in rural areas. Um, but there are now more meth overdoses and more meth seizures uh, per gram than opioids. So I think we really need to be aware of both. And we're also, I'll just I'll, I could talk about this all night. Um, back 20 years ago, when I started working with, with meth clients, um, I never saw a meth client that would use heroin. Uh, that was just two totally separate worlds. And today it's not that unusual to see those two combined. So that's a case where a, a co-occurring addiction that we spoke of earlier, um, where it's a kind of a new one and it's growing in, um, in, its, in the amount of time and phenomena that we're seeing. So yeah, Chem6 is something to really be alert to. And it goes by many names, paired, drug and sex use, fused, drug and sex use, but it's the same idea, co-occurring.